Welcome to Old Stuff Show. Today uh, we have a two location video on uh, old books. Uh, we're going to be uh, talking, starting out uh, from home base here and uh, then uh, do a visit at uh, my booth in Aberfoyle. So uh, we'll uh, have a good look at uh, some of the interesting information about collecting old books. Uh, before we get started, a couple of things I'd like to ask of you. First of all, you could just press that subscribe button right now. That would be uh, terrific. That helps a great deal. And I'd also like to give a shout out to uh, Nancy at Wishes and Weeds. Met her the other day and uh, she has a very interesting website that you might want to have a look at. And certainly subscribe and uh, mention uh, that uh, I was uh, the person that recommended her site. And uh, have a look at that. Today we're going to start off with some general information about books. What makes books uh, valuable uh, or interesting? First of all, their age, but age alone doesn't mean that it's worth a lot, uh, monetarily especially. The uh, older books certainly have lots of uh, interest, but value-wise, uh, there are so many books out there that are older books. Depends on a lot more than just the age. And certainly if book is in the valuable category, condition is a very important part, and the author, who the person was that uh, wrote the book, and sometimes too if the uh, book is autographed by the author, that has a uh, bearing on the uh, value as well, and the topic, certain uh, specialty topics like military books, etc., command more um, value than um, some of the general literature books of, of the past. If you're looking to find a value and you have an old book and you wonder, wonder what that's worth, there's two locations on the web that I could uh, recommend to you. One is uh, called abe.com and the other is bibliofind.com. Both are used book sites and rarely do I not find the book that I have and want to find out more information about. So uh, it's, it's a great place to do it and you'll find there that um, the values often are uh, quite widely spread apart from uh, a little value to a lot of value. It depends on who's selling it and uh, what they think the, uh, the market will bear. But it'll give you a general idea of what, uh, what your book is, is worth. So I have a few uh, books here in my own collection to start off with and then when we get to Aberfoyle you'll see some of the, uh, the books that I've taken there to, uh, to sell. But one of the books I mentioned later in the uh, Aberfoyle uh, segment is uh, our books by Arthur Stringer. And I have a little bit of a collection of Arthur Stringer books, in, including this one as well. Interest to me is uh, twofold. One, my, my own uh, sons went to Arthur Stringer Public School here in London, and he was a resident of London uh, and, and moved to New York. Uh, later in his life, he was a pr prolific writer. But one of my prized possessions, which makes adds to the value, as I just mentioned, is uh, the fact that this particular book he autographed and he uh, typed up a poem, which he signed, and presented it to uh, a school in St. Thomas. So um, <clears throat> this particular book is called uh, A Woman at Dusk and Other Poems. So it's a poetry book. Um, but to have his, uh, his signature uh, at the end of the uh, poem here is, is kind of special. So uh, this one I'll give to my, uh, my sons because they, uh, they attended that school. In the, in the world of sports, of course, autographs have always been considered very important. And I, I received this book. It's, it's quite old. It's from the uh, early 50s. Uh, it's called Hockey Heroes by uh, Ron McAllister. But I had a cousin who uh, was uh, killed in a car accident and uh, this book was presented to me uh, after that had happened. And what my cousin had done is he had, and then I added to it, he had collected autographs uh, from a lot of uh, professional teams that passed through uh, Chatham, Ontario, where he lived at the time. This is the 1956 Montreal Canadiens. Pretty well most of the autographs there, including John Beliveau and Jacques Plante, 
all the big stars of the Montreal team in those days. Uh, so it's pretty special and one that collectors would, not only for the book, but for the autographs, would find very special. And also this same 1955-56 uh, uh, Chicago Blackhawks, and kind of hard to see them, but uh, all the big names are there in uh, on that team. So I see people like um, Jack McIntyre and uh, Pete Babando and Mitro Presti, Larry Wilson, Glenn Scove. So that's kind of special. And then just above that, Chatham had uh, the Chatham Maroon Senior A hockey team. And uh, there's some autographs from that team from the early 50s as well. So this is a special book. And uh, because of the autographs, of course, that makes it even more special. So that one will be uh, handed, handed on to my, uh, my sons as well. And getting to some of the more unusual uh, situations with books, uh, this book called Forever Amber may ring a bell with you. Uh, this, this book was published in the 1940s and was banned as being a little too graphic in those days. And so they did, uh, did not pass the censor. Uh, Kathleen Wins Win Windsor was the uh, author. And this book was published in 1944. But uh, it was appealed in the 50s, and, uh, and, uh, and the ban was lifted. Uh, but it's a collectible. This one isn't in the best condition, but uh, still, it, I've seen them on the, uh, on the uh, used book websites and so on in good condition for several hundred dollars. This one is kind of interesting because I picked up <laughs> at a Goodwill store, uh, I think for $5. So I'm always out there looking, and knowledge is power. If I, I recognize that title, and I do a little research on it after, and realize, oh yeah, that was a, that was a good buy. So that's always part of the hunt, finding the uh, interesting books that might have some value in some way. This is kind of interesting. This is a, a, a reader, very old reader, uh, called Child Life. And those old readers, especially, were interesting because of the graphics, the uh, the uh, artwork, and it was uh, something that uh, people treasured in those days. And kids loved to to look at it. And it's sort of the early Dick and Jane type book that uh, some of us remember as as kids. And again, the value on this, I think I looked this up, and it might be around twenty five dollars but on the used book sites, whatever somebody's willing to pay for it, obviously in the end. Regional books, like where I live, uh, the Great Lakes, represent something significant in our geography. And the Great Lakes Saga book here is, uh, tells the story of shipbuilding and, and uh, the Great Lakes ships that were well known at the time and uh, very very good information book again specialized people that want to know a little more about that and find that book quite fascinating this is the this is one of my favorite books because lessons on manners because it says a lot about society both then and now and I've used this book in my professional career with students and uh, the to, to look at how society has changed over the years. If you go, this one goes back to uh, the early 1900s. And um, so it uh, gives you an idea of Victorian values at that time. I, I just give you a, a couple of samples here. The students at that time who are reading this are looking at a chapter called Manners at the Table. And it says quite clearly what you're supposed to do the knife, when you're using it, is used to cutting up the food but not conveying it to the mouth. The fork is used for this purpose. There is a correct way of using knife and fork, which can be best learned by observing one who does it properly. The fork should be raised by the right hand without crooking the elbow so much as to bring the hand around at a right angle to the mouth. It should not be overloaded. It is said that to pack food upon the fork is a common, get this, a common American vulgarism originating in the hurried manner 
of eating at railway stations at hotels. It is an unhealthy and inelegant habit. So two things here, one, how to eat properly, two, their attitude towards uh, American culture at that time here in, in uh, Canada and, and, uh, and um, you know, how society should perform. Uh, the book is full of these little gems. Uh, I'll just do one more here. Uh, this one's on, on uh, just manners in society. Um, passing directly in front of another person is to be avoided if possible. It is better, however, to pass in front with a polite pardon me than to crowd behind. A gentleman should open a door for a lady and allow her to go through before him while he holds it open. A gentleman precedes a lady in going up the stairs, but follows her on coming down, being careful not to step on her dress. Gentlemen should not remain seated when there are ladies or older people standing in the room. Everything is laid out here and how you're supposed to act. And if you think about how young people today are trained in terms of manners, um, older people would say they should read this book. But uh, anyway, society does change and uh, it's kind of fascinating to, to think about. Mm. So, so book collecting is, is great, but it, it takes up space and um, again, there's so many of them. In, in your, I met a person a couple weeks ago who said he had 1,500 old books in his library at home. And some people really, really look for specific uh, topic areas that they're, they're trying to, uh, to cover. So th this is just a few of the uh, samples that I have here. And so what we're going to do now is we're just going to go on Aberfoyle and uh, show you some of the ones that I brought along there to, uh, to um, sell on my, at my uh, booth. So um, we'll, we'll see you there. So we're at the Aberfoyle market again and uh, this time we're going to concentrate on old books that are here. Just a, a few of the uh, books that I've taken with me here to the market and uh, just look at some of the categories that, that I have here. My uh, favorite book is this one, Roughing It in the Bush, and it's a nice old one, uh, dated here inside 1919. What's so neat about yeah. it is it's a Canadian classic, and inside there uh, is history of Upper and Lower Canada. But there's some great illustrations in here, some great plates, color ones. So, for example, that one, Farm 1871. And the book is, is full of these. And I know some people buy books and they, they uh, separate these from the book and sell them separately. Uh, but anyways, this one is called Night Fishing. And so it's, uh, it's kind of neat. One of, the, one of these uh, classics with uh, lots of original originality to it. it. Looks like the Lake Superior history, uh, regional history is always uh, very desirable. And uh, the Old Tom Swift books, of course, people relate that. Uh, if we go over here to this book, this is really very interesting, Canada in the 19th century. Again, it's, uh, it's got a lot of age. It has uh, lots of black and white traits, uh, and uh, that's a history. So the official title, Progress of Canada in the 19th Century. Great for history buffs. Uh, this one is also interesting, but it doesn't have a that cover. It's uh, Canada in the 19th century. Um, pioneers in Canada, rather. Very strange. Two Solitudes book is always great. Any of the De La Roche books, the Jama books, always very desirable. Uh, some of the more specific books like Stenmer's Medical Dictionary, National Geographic, uh, 
That was neat. Find. Uh, here's a good one. Uh, America, America Illustrated. Lots of great illustrations in here. And again, people will take these and frame them, sell them in individually, because they're uh, great lithos. But that's it. Uh, that's a good book. Wander around here. There's just a host of uh, books. The Arthur Stringer book is kind of interesting. Arthur Stringer was uh, born in London, Ontario. Wrote uh, many books. Moved to New York. School named after him in London. But uh, he was a prolific writer of stories, fictional stories. And I have one at at home where he has actually typed a poem in and signed it. And uh, it's, it's quite, quite unique. Cookbooks are always very popular. The older the better, I think. Metropolitan Cookbook is a common one. And when you have regional, as I have here in my hand, Brantford, Ontario, that's uh, always popular in the region. Very old purity cookbook. Davis, Davis, Davis. Uh, the church cookbooks are quite collectible. One high uh, United Church where all the congregation contributes. Another metropolitan and uh, women of the uniform. So, always people looking for that type of thing. Old school books. Of course, this is the classic one here, one with Dick and Jane. And a lot of you out there would remember using that book. And then the soft cover as well. These are quite collectible. And just just books like junior arithmetic and any English literature kinds of books are always something that people would uh, collect. If you go to scout books, all the scout handbooks are great. And there's quite a number of them out there for sure. Again, specialty books like uh, railway books, um, the old Eaton's catalog, that's the last edition in 1976 that was put out, so it's something that uh, people like to have. And then if we go over here to some of the old cowboy books, Louis the Moor and so on, always people looking for that, and old children's books. Very collectible old children's books, and one of the reasons is because of the graphics. A book like this is just so beautifully done in terms of graphics, and kids would love it. So, very brilliant, very bright. But there's lots of uh, great old children's books out that go way back. Picture parade, children's. Book of Battleships, the old ABC books, and this one is interesting because it's a cloth cover, cloth book where kids have a harder time wrecking it. But uh, those are neat to have. 24 items. And then, of course, the uh, Thornton Burgess books, still very popular with kids. There's a whole set of them there. Looking for. And if you go to books like uh, Sherry Ames and, uh, and uh, Trixie Bowman, people are still looking for those. And then a lot of the books in the 50s, the Tarzan books, the Lassie books, always great. And one thing that I really think is kind of neat is the, uh, still a great interest in the Hardy Boys and the Nancy Drew books. And kids are still reading those. So um, they have the older edition and then the shinier, newer edition, but uh, still sellable from my end of it. So those are samples of what I have here. And uh, we'll look at more. 
So we're back at home again, and hope you enjoyed looking at the variety of, of uh, selection of books that we uh, showed you. Just to finish off, uh, just re remember that the Everfoil Market is open until the end of October, and I'm at booth 383940. Love to see you there. Also, uh, my eBay site, Lon Rem, instructions will be given how to access that at the end of, of this video. And we hope that uh, you have a good day, and we'll talk to you the next time. Thanks. Bye.